Did you know that a single tire can take up to 500 years to break down in nature? That means the tire you see today will still be here 20 generations from now. And here's the shocking part. In the United States alone, more than 300 million tires are thrown away every year. The big question is, where do they all go? Instead of piling up in landfills or being dumped in empty lots, many of those tires are starting a very different journey, recycling. First, they're collected and fed into massive machines that cut them into pieces. Then the steel wires and the fabric layers inside are pulled out, leaving behind pure rubber. That rubber is ground down into fine granules and sent off to different factories. Some of it becomes playgrounds and running tracks. Some of it is melted down to create new materials. And some even finds its way back into car-related products. Are you curious to see how this whole process unfolds? Stick around, because what you're about to witness may completely change the way you look at something as ordinary as an old tire. If those tires aren't recycled, the story takes a very different turn. They can sit for centuries in landfills, taking up massive space and turning into breeding grounds for mosquitoes, rats, and disease. Even worse, when a tire dump catches fire, the flames can smolder for months and release thick black smoke filled with dioxins, heavy metals, and fine particles. And if they are left to slowly break down in the rain, tiny bits of microplastic seep into the soil, flow into rivers, and eventually come back onto our dinner plates. That is why recycling is no longer a choice. It has become a necessity. In the United States, the tire retreading industry for trucks and airplanes has saved billions of dollars in fuel costs and reduced dependence on oil. China has taken a different path. The country leads the world in large-scale pyrolysis, turning tires into oil and carbon black. But with that approach come constant debates over pollution. The contrast is clear. The United States focuses on safety and sustainability, while China chases volume regardless of environmental cost. Which do you think is on the right track, the US or China? Few people realize that when a tire comes off a vehicle, its journey is far from over. A second life begins with a step that may look simple but plays a critical role, collection. From garages and parking lots to repair shops, old tires are gathered, loaded onto specialized trucks, and transported to recycling centers. The work is far heavier than it seems, since tires are bulky, dirty with road dust, oil, and sometimes even bits of metal. At the collection site, workers carefully inspect and sort them. Car tires are separated from truck or aircraft tires, making it easier to process each type later on. To support this process, many U.S. states apply a small charge called the tire disposal fee. When buying a new tire, consumers pay an extra 25 cents to $2 per unit. That money goes into a fund that helps cover collection costs and discourages people from dumping tires into the environment. Thanks to this system, about 80% of discarded tires in the U.S. are recycled or reused in other applications. This achievement places the country among the global leaders in tire management and turns what used to be an environmental burden into a valuable resource. Once the tires arrive at the recycling center, they are not treated all at once, but are sorted according to their condition. Those that still have an intact structure, without deep cuts or major deformation, are set aside for retreading. These tires can be repaired, stripped of their worn tread, and fitted with new layers, allowing them to serve again on trucks, buses, and even aircraft. The ones that are too damaged and no longer safe follow a different path. They are shredded into small pieces to become raw material. From this pile of rubber scraps, new possibilities emerge. Part of it is used as alternative fuel in cement kilns, while another portion is processed into fine rubber granules, a key ingredient for asphalt roads, sports floors, playgrounds, and many everyday products. This sorting step is crucial because it determines the recycling route each tire will take. Among the tires collected and sorted, only a small portion meets the standards for retreading. 
These are the ones with the casing strong enough to be reused. They move into the retread process, where the tire is renewed to extend its lifespan by tens of thousands of additional miles. The retreading process begins with an inspection of the casing, the structural backbone of the tire. This step is critical to determine whether the tire is strong enough to be reused. Workers carefully examine it with the naked eye, looking for visible cracks, large cuts, or deformations. At the same time, shearography technology is used to scan the interior, detecting hidden damage that cannot be seen from the outside. Only the casings that meet safety standards are kept for further processing. Once the casing has been selected, it is sent to the buffing machine, a specialized piece of equipment with grinding heads that spin at high speed. Here, the entire old tread is shaved away, exposing the undertread beneath. The surface of the tire is roughened and reshaped to the exact diameter and roundness required, ensuring it stays balanced when rotating. The grinding depth is only a few millimeters, just enough to remove the worn rubber without damaging the casing structure. Modern machines are also equipped with suction systems that capture rubber dust as it is produced, reducing pollution and lowering the risk of fire. In the retread industry, buffing is often considered the most critical step because the quality of this surface will determine about 70% of how well the new tread bonds to the casing. After the buffing stage, the tire casing often reveals flaws that the old tread once hid. Things like punctures from nails, cross cuts, or tiny cracks. In the repair stage, workers first drill or cut away the damaged rubber to create a clean, even surface. Then they use liquid rubber cement for small cracks or inject hot, molten rubber directly into deeper holes to fill and reinforce them. For larger damage, a special insert known as a repair patch is heat pressed onto the casing so it bonds firmly with the structure. Once the repair is complete, the surface is buffed again to make sure it blends seamlessly with the rest of the casing and doesn't leave behind a weak spot when the tire is back in service. What matters most is that every repaired point has elasticity and adhesion almost identical to the original rubber. Some advanced facilities even scan the casing electronically or take X-ray images after the repair to make sure no hidden defects remain. Thanks to this process, a single casing can be retreaded two or three times and still be safe, saving up to 70% of the raw material compared to making a brand new tire. After the casing has been smoothed and its flaws repaired, the tire enters the most critical stage, attaching the new tread. This is when the tire's rebirth truly begins. In the pre-cure method, tread strips are produced in advance at the factory from a mix of rubber, carbon black, and additives. These strips already carry the finished patterns and are cut to match the exact circumference of the casing. Before they are applied, workers coat the surface with a layer of cushion gum, an uncured rubber compound with strong adhesive properties. The tread strip is then pressed tightly onto the casing by a roller, ensuring an even bond with no trapped air. The mold cure method takes a different path. Here, raw rubber is mixed, cut, and wrapped directly around the casing. The entire tire is then placed inside a metal mold engraved with tread patterns, where heat and pressure form the new surface. Whichever method is used, absolute precision is required. Even a fraction of an inch out of alignment can cause the tire to lose balance at high speeds. That is why many factories now rely on optical cameras and pressure sensors to monitor every step. According to the Retread Tire Association, more than half of a retread tire's lifespan depends on the quality of this tread application stage. At the final stage, the tire enters the vulcanization process, the cooking phase of the entire procedure. Before being placed into the heating chamber, an enveloping step is carried out. The entire tire is wrapped in a special rubber membrane combined with a sealed airbag. This outer layer acts like an armor, helping to distribute pressure evenly around the surface and preventing air from seeping in during vulcanization. When the tire is placed into the curing chamber, the temperature can reach over 200 degrees Celsius, while the high compression forces the new tread to bond firmly with the old casing. The heat causes the polymer chains within the rubber to rearrange, forming durable cross-links that both increase hardness 
and maintain elasticity. After several hours, the result is a rejuvenated tire with sharp tread patterns, almost indistinguishable from a brand new product. But the process does not end there. Each tire is subjected to a series of strict quality checks, measuring dynamic balance, closely inspecting the surface, and even scanning with X-ray technology to detect hidden flaws. Only the products that pass every stage of rigorous inspection are qualified to leave the production line, ready to roll for tens of thousands of miles more. However, not every tire is strong enough to be reborn as a new one. For those that are too badly damaged, their next life will be to be shredded into pieces and turned into fuel for the cement industry. Before being shredded, the tire must have its bead wire removed, the thick metal ring along the tire's edge that keeps it firmly seated on the wheel rim. A specialized machine grips and pulls this steel wire out, leaving behind pure rubber. The recovered steel is collected and sold as scrap metal, making its way back to steel mills for reuse. Once the steel has been removed, the tires enter a multi-stage shredding line, where the clash of metal and the tearing of rubber echo non-stop. In the first stage, a primary cutter with slow turning but powerful blades rips apart the tire's structure, breaking it into large rubber chunks. These chunks are immediately fed into secondary shredders, where higher speeds and sharper blades further reduce them into chips just a few inches across. The material stream then passes through vibrating screens, Oversized pieces are sent back for reprocessing, while properly sized fragments continue forward. Through this cyclical process, the rubber is gradually reduced into uniform granules, making it easier to transport and handle. Few realize that from a single truck tire weighing about 100 pounds, the system can produce thousands of tiny rubber particles, each weighing no more than a piece of candy. That uniformity not only improves combustion efficiency in cement kilns, but also paves the way for a wide range of other applications in construction and everyday life. After being ground into granules, the rubber is packed and transported to cement plants. There, it is fed directly into the clinker kiln, a massive combustion chamber maintained at 2500-2700 degrees per hour. Thanks to the automated feeding system, the rubber mixes with coal or natural gas, burning completely under extreme heat and releasing a large amount of energy that helps save fossil fuel. The ash that remains is absorbed into the clinker, adding essential minerals and turning all of the rubber into new value for cement. From tiny rubber crumbs, the recycling journey takes a different turn. Instead of disappearing inside cement kilns, they are given new life in roads, stadiums, and even the shoes we wear every day. The crumb rubber production line begins with mixing the rubber particles into molten asphalt inside massive blending tanks. Under high heat, the rubber fuses with asphalt, forming a viscous mixture that is pumped directly into paving machines to create road surfaces with greater durability and resistance to cracking. Another portion of the material is sent to hydraulic presses, where it is compressed into thick rubber sheets for gym floors or playground surfaces, when processed into smaller granules, the rubber can be poured directly into molds, forming elastic surfaces that help absorb impact and reduce injuries during play or exercise. The finest particles are blended with synthetic resins and injection molded into shoe soles or paving tiles. This entire process transforms waste rubber into new materials, ready to serve infrastructure, sports, and everyday life. Among the many tire recycling technologies, pyrolysis is seen as a distinctive option. Instead of shredding or retreading, old tires are placed into sealed chambers and heated to around 700 to 1000 degree under anaerobic conditions. Without oxygen, the rubber does not ignite but breaks down into three main products, pyrolysis oil, syngas, and carbon black powder. The oil can be refined into industrial fuel, with one ton of waste tires yielding on average more than 100 gallons, enough to power heavy machinery. The Singus generated is often reused on site to maintain the heat of the pyrolysis reactor, lowering operating costs. Carbon black, which accounts for about 30% of a tire's weight, 
is collected as a fine powder and reused in the production of rubber, plastics, or coatings. This technology has become widespread in China, where hundreds of large-scale facilities are in operation. Yet alongside its economic potential comes environmental risk. If gas cleaning systems are substandard, emissions from pyrolysis can contain hazardous organic compounds. The journey of a tire doesn't end when it leaves the wheel. From collection and sorting to the different recycling technologies, every step shows that this seemingly useless material still holds plenty of value. Whether reborn as a new tire, fueling cement kilns, or transformed into the roads and playgrounds we use every day, it all helps ease the burden on the environment while creating tangible benefits for people. Yet this path is not without challenges. Technology, costs, and ongoing environmental debates raise the question, can we recycle even more sustainably? And if you found today's story helpful, leave us a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to join us in the videos to come.